What is up, guys? This is the Ospinger Show bringing you another Monday Night Rewind podcast where we hit the rewind button and go back 20 years to cover Monday Night Raw this week in 1998. And then we hit the fast forward to come into 2018 and cover the current news. But as usual, we will start off with the old Raw and then fast forward into 2018. And for the current news, if you want to hear that stuff, I have been putting timestamps in the description. So if you want to just listen to that section of the podcast, you can look in the description for when you need to fast forward to to get to the fast forward section kind of funny they're both fast forward Um, but you can find the timestamp there to be able to fast forward through to that time so you don't have to hear all the old raw stuff if you just want to hear the current news but as i said we are going to be starting with the old raw from 1998 and this took place on february 28th 1998 and this is raw 248 a bunch of eights going on here and it took place in waco texas and it got a 3.2 rating so it's a 0.2 percent or whatever points point two points up from last week because obviously it was on saturday night and this this is the monday after so there's just a two-day turnaround for raw going on here and then of course eventually we'll slowly see the ratings start to rise until raw takes over nitro in the ratings but this week's show kicked off with the replay of the new age outlaws interference in the lod match from last week so if you remember in the last week's episode, there was a match of LOD taking on the Quebecers and the New Age Outlaws come running out, pushing down a dumpster, and they took Hawk and threw him into the dumpster and then sat on top of it and stuff when Animal tried to help him to get out. He chased off the New Age Outlaws and then they all both chased after them, getting the win to the Quebecers. And so that's kind of setting up what's going to happen this week, which it then goes after the whole show opening and stuff. It goes into that match, so it's the New Age Outlaws taking on the LOD for the tag titles. So this is, I guess, a kind of, or they're building it up as an important match for the LOD. So as they come out, of course, Road Dog does his usual promo where he's cutting the whole, oh, you didn't know type thing. And uh, he ends up calling the LOD the OLD, so obviously old. And he keeps playing on that, that they're old in the promo and stuff. And then in the match, um, the Outlaws are cheating at every opportunity they can get. So they're using ref distractions and just doing everything, fighting on the outside, just using all the cheating tactics they can to try and get the upper hand on the LOD. And throughout the match, Hawk is being isolated by the New Age Outlaws. So he's being separated from Animal, not being allowed to tag in and stuff. And they're just kind of beating him. But Animals eventually gets tagged in and then he comes in and just cleans house as usual with a hot tag and stuff. And then the LOD end up hitting the Doomsday device on Road Dog, And Animals goes to pin Road Dog, but Hawk is still in the ring and the ref is trying to get him out of the ring. And Hawk's, you know, like, why am I, why are you kicking me out of the ring type thing? And so the ref's distracted at that point and so that keeps Animal from getting the pin. And he's, like, mad about that. Like, why isn't the ref counting the pin? And while the ref still turn around distracted with Hawk and everything, Billy Gunn has come up in the ring with a title belt. And he hits Animal on the head with the belt and knocks him out. And Road Dog's able to, like, roll over on top of him and gets the pin on Animal. So the New Age Outlaws keep the title there. And the LOD have lost once again. And so at the end of the match, after the Outlaws have left, the LOD is staring at each other. And Animal ends up grabbing Hawk and like, why why were you in the ring? And just yelling at him for what was going on. And they just kind of start pushing each other. And then they begin to fight with each other. So they're just rolling around on the ring on top of each other. You know, punching whenever, who's ever on top. Just punching the person on the bottom and stuff. And they're just rolling around the ring. So a bunch of referees and officials come running out. And they're separating the two. And of course, they're doing the whole thing. Holding them apart. And one gets loose and runs over and attacks the other still. And they just keep going back and forth on that. But eventually they are able to get them separated and taken to the back. And so it's kind of just setting up or proposing a LOD breakup here. And we come back from break and on commentary and they're just talking about how the LOD are still fighting in the back. And the officials are trying to get them separated and broken up. So we'll just have that to look forward to throughout the night is them having issues still. And then that goes into our next match of Ken Shamrock taking on Jeff Jarrett who of course comes out with Jim Cornette. Um, so in the match, at one point, uh, Jim Cornette grabs Shamrock's foot on a suplex or as uh, Shamrock's trying to suplex Jeff Jarrett from the outside in. And since he grabs the foot, it kind of doesn't allow Shamrock to go back as he should. And so he ends up just dropping Jeff Jarrett on top of him. And Jeff goes for a pin, obviously, since he's on top of Shamrock. But he doesn't get it there. Um, then they just continue on with the match and it's just a pretty even match back and forth like one person will hit a few moves and then it goes to the other person hit a few moves and it just keeps seesawing back and forth of who's in control 
Um, then at one point, Shamrock's got Jeff Jarrett back into a corner, just punching him a whole bunch, and the ref comes moving in to probably like try to you know check the open fist and all that sort of stuff. Was he's doing it? The ref ends up getting hit by Shamrock's elbow in the face, and so it kind of like knocks the ref back, and he's holding his face and everything. And at that point, Jarrett attacks off the distraction on Shamrock and calls Cornette to come in, and Cornette comes in, and Jarrett's holding him, and he goes to hit Shamrock. Cornette does, but Shamrock, you know, moves very slightly or something, or moves Jared around, and Cornette ends up hitting Jared on the head with the racket, and so that knocks Jared out. So Shamrock comes around to realize what's going on, and so he just looks at Jared just laying there on the ring, knocked out, and so he just grabs a hold of the ankle lock and puts it on him, and he's sitting there holding it, and the ref comes back from, you know, his injury or whatever, and he realizes that Shamrock has the ankle lock on, and so he checks Jarrett, like, lifts his hand once, and it drops, and then he calls for the end of the match, so Shamrock gets the win there, but this was not for the NWA title, Jeff, for some reason, Jeff Jarrett didn't have it on the line this week, and so Shamrock won, but he doesn't win the title, and so after the match, Michael Cole goes up and interviews Jarrett about losing and everything. And Jarrett just um, gives him a response that maybe it's time that Jim and I go our separate ways. So they are also teasing a separation of Jarrett, Jeff Jarrett from Jim Cornette. We then head to the back where Jerry the King Waller is back in the locker room and he's interviewing Animal about what's going on. As Animal's talking, he ends up using the, an F-bomb and so he drops the F-bomb on live TV, but obviously they bleep it out. And he says, you know, I ain't got no brother. As a part of the conversation, I don't know what he was exactly saying. But he's just saying, I ain't got no brother. Well, after as soon as he says that, you hear noise. And it goes over and Hawk is standing at the doorway. And he goes, you ain't got no brother. And just comes running straight at him. And they start fighting again in the, back, in the locker room. So officials and the guys that are in the locker room, which I saw like uh, Bradshaw. And there was only like two or three other guys in there. And they just are all trying to separate them and get them separating more. So continuing on this LOD breakup. Then our next match is the DOA taking on the Truth Commission coming out with Jackal. And so I thought it was funny as the Truth Commission's coming down to the ring that Jackal just goes running up in front of all the guys. Because he's like towards the back with Kurgan. But as they're coming out he runs up and to get in front of like Sniper or Recon who's ever in the front. And gets in front of them to like lead them to the ring. And then the match starts and nothing really amazing goes on. The DOA is just dominating the whole match. But Kurgan gets tired of it. So as Recon gets thrown into the corner, Kurgan grabs a hold of him and then tags himself in. And he comes in and starts fighting off Skull and 8-Ball because they were kind of double teaming at that point. Eventually, Kurgan ends up putting on the Paralyzer on one of the two guys. I couldn't tell which one it was to get the win. So the Truth Commission gets the win there. And then the Jackal ends up coming into the ring and he's just yelling at Sniper for not tagging in Kurgan at any point. And so Sniper freaks out and he is mad and everything. Goes to hit the Jackal, but as he's pulling his arm back to go to punch him, Kurgan grabs his hand and stops him. And then Kurgan puts the Paralyzer on Sniper and then drags him to the back as they leave the ring. And the Paralyzer, if you don't know, is just the claw but on the head. So he like puts it on their forehead and so it's just a squeeze on their head. Then we've got JR interviewing the DX and they're at Sean's house. So it's just uh, Sean, Triple H, China, and his wife. So China and his wife are just sitting at like a bar counter. And then Triple H and Sean Michaels are playing pool the whole time. And JR brings up their litigation against Stone Cold. And Sean Michaels said it's simple. He hit a woman from behind and left her terrified or something along those lines. And so that's why they're suing Stone Cold. And then uh, Sean talks about how things may explode next week because everyone's going to be at Raw. And it's been mentioned that Stone Cold, Shawn Michaels, Triple H, all of DX is going to be there. Um, and Mike Tyson will be there as well. So he's saying things may explode next week on Raw with everyone being there. And then Triple H is talking about WrestleMania and that this year's WrestleMania will be rated X. Which is obviously not a good rating. It's for dirty stuff. So he's just saying that WrestleMania is going to be rated X. And so viewer discretion is advised or whatever so just continuing on the build to wrestlemania without the guys actually being there in the arena and everything then we go to our next match of takamichi noku taking on barry windham for some reason and barry windham ends up coming out with the nwa and so sunny does the intro again and she before she introduces the guy she asks all the men she's like i have a question for all the men in the arena is everything really bigger in texas and of course all the guys cheer and then she introduces him so cornet gets on commentary as soon as they get out there and he's just talking about how he was able to get this match signed with taka and how he took advantage of taka's lack of english to get this match signed and everything 
But in the match, as you'd expect, Barry Windham just completely destroys Taka throughout the whole match. But Taka does hit some offensive move, but they have like no effect on Barry Windham. So he'll do like a moonsault and Barry will just catch him or something. But Barry does end up hitting the lariat and starts to go for the pin. But as he's doing it, the lights end up going out. So Kane starts coming out to the ring. And it's mentioned as Kane's coming out, the commentary mentions that the NWA has taken off. So Cornet, Barry Windham, and all the guys have just ran away. So Kane gets to the ring with only Taka left in the ring and he picks him up, hits a choke slam on him and then a tombstone and then Paul Bear ends up getting the microphone and he just calls out Stone Cold to face Kane next week on Raw. So the, Kane's just kind of moving right up from destroying guys to just going after Stone Cold who you know is going to be the next world champion and stuff so he's just moving right up to the top. And that leads us into hour number two, and it kicks off with Michael Cole interviewing the Outlaws as they're leaving the building. And uh, the Outlaws are just kind of ignoring him and not wanting to answer the question. And Road Dog, for some reason, has a video camera, and he's just videotaping the whole time. So it's the... Of course, this is the late 90s, so he has a big giant video camera that he's got the thing that he has to hold up to his eye and everything, and so he's just doing that the whole time, like looking at Michael Cole and everything, and at one point, Road Dog mentioned, he goes, I'm already drunk and stuff, and so it's kind of, you know, playing up that wrestlers are drinkers and all that sort of stuff, but as, since no one will answer Michael Cole or give him good answers, he, you know, cuts off the interview and all of a sudden you hear a chainsaw noise happening and then all of a sudden Chainsaw Charlie and Cactus Jack come up and start attacking the outlaw's car and so chainsaws, you know, rubbing the chainsaw against the car and sparks are flying but obviously there's no chain on the chainsaw so it's just the setup they did on the actual chainsaw to do that. And then Cactus starts hitting the car with a baseball bat and just kind of breaking out windows and everything until the outlaws drive away. Then next up we have a little video on Dusty Rhodes, so it's just showing a bunch of like footage of Dusty Rhodes when he was in the WWF, and then there's a, like an outlined figure of Dusty Rhodes, so it's all blacked out so you can't really see him, but it's a person that's wearing a cowboy hat and has curly hair like he does, and someone doing his voice, which I assume is Bruce Pritchard, because if you've listened to his podcast, he does the Dusty Rhodes voice, and it sounds almost exactly like him, and since I know obviously it wasn't Dusty, the only other person I would assume it could be was possibly Goldust, but Goldust, when he ends up coming out he does the voice and it doesn't sound anything like him so I assume that was Bruce Pritchard doing the voice and as he's talking he keeps mentioning Stardust so I thought that was interesting because obviously um, a few years ago we had Cody Rhodes as the Stardust character and Dusty here keeps or the Dusty character keeps mentioning, mentioning Stardust and Gold Dust ends up mentioning it as well. So then that goes into the next match of Goldust taking on Bradshaw. So as Goldust comes out, he's dressed as Dusty Rhodes and he comes out to his music and he's dressed in the polka dots and he has um, like padding, I assume pillows and stuff in his outfit to make him look fatter. And he has like the design on his arms and everything and he's just really going, he has like black eyeliner going around his eyes to be, because Dusty Rhodes always had like the darkened eyes, you know, like of a tired person. And so he's just really doing it up to be like Dusty. And as soon as or soon into the match, it's mentioned by commentary that an official from the WWF talked to Dusty Rhodes earlier today, and he approved of this if his son wanted to do it. So it's not like they're just completely just outright making fun of Dusty and stuff. They had his approval. But in the match, Goldust is just wrestling a lot like Dusty, so doing a lot of his same moves. But Bradshaw ends up just dominating him the whole time. Um, at one point, or at one point, as they're fighting towards the end of the match, Goldust starts to lose the padding out of his shirt. And so he's like starting to fall out up by his neck and everything. And at one point he starts to go for the bionic elbow or doing the flip flop and fly or whatever like Dusty called it. But Bradshaw ends up hitting a lariat instead and gets the win off of that. And so as Goldust is leaving, Michael Cole interviews him. And all he really says is that Scar Stardust doesn't compare to Goldust. And so he's just saying, you know, that his dad wasn't as good as him. Then next we go to the back again and Kevin Kelly this time's trying to get an interview with Hawk as he's leaving because he has on his street clothes and he's walking out the door and Hawk just ignores him and doesn't give him any responses or anything. So Hawk still continuing on with this LOD breakup. Then we go to our next match of Steve Blackman taking on The Rock. Um, so early in the match... D'Lo ends up grabbing a hold of Steve Blackman's foot to trip him up. Kama ends up attacking Steve Blackman on the outside while The Rock was distracting the referee. Uh, at one point, D'Lo's choking Blackman, so The Rock keeps like distracting the ref over on one side of the ring across from Blackman, and then these guys will do moves on him and stuff to help beat him up and help The Rock out. Um, at one point, The Rock starts to go for a pin off of... I think he just does, I don't even know what movie, oh, Power Slam. And as he's going for the pin, Fruit gets up on the apron and that causes a distraction to the referee. 
And so the rock gets up and him and Blackman start fighting it and Blackman ends up uh, slingshotting the rock and the rock ends up hitting Farouk and knocks Farouk off of the apron. And then a little bit later, the rock starts to go for another pin and Farouk once again gets up on the apron and this is causing a distraction for the referee and everything. And D'Lo on the outside tries to throw Steve Blackman's nunchucks into the rock, but when he throws them, he overthrows them and it goes into Steve Blackman's hands. And since the ref's still distracted, Steve Blackman ends up hitting the rock with those nunchucks and is able to get the pin off that because um, Fruit got back down. And so the referee noticed that Blackman was pinning the rock and so he counted the pin and Blackman got the win there. And so after the match, the rock is up and yelling at D'Lo for doing that and D'Lo's blaming it on Fruit that Fruit told him to do it. And so the rock tells Fruit to get in the ring and he's, you know, treating him like a dog or something. He's just pointing at the mat and snap his fingers and telling him to get in. And so he gets in the rock, just starts yelling at him and stuff. And then Farouk just kind of like weighs his hand at him like, I don't need this and stuff. And he just gets out of the ring and leave. And halfway up the ramp, he turns around and just starts like motioning for the other nation members that come up to him. But like to get by him and everything and leave the rock behind. And they do that, ending that match off. Then we go to our next segment of Kevin Kelly in the back interviewing Luna in the locker room. And she's just talking about how she's waiting for Sable to show her face and she's going to rearrange it like an Andy Warhol painting or something like that, and that she's going to be on her like maggots on roadkill. So that's just a beautiful visual to see right there, <laughs> maggots on a roadkill. But she's just waiting to get all over Sable and attack her. Then we go to our next match of the Rock and Roll Express taking on the Headbangers, and this is for the NWA tag titles. So before the match even starts, Sergeant Slaughter ends up coming out with Earl Hebner, and he kicks Tommy out from the match so that Tommy Young's not going to be the ref for this match. And of course, Cornette starts yelling and he threatens to sue the WWF for doing that because this is an NWA match and that the, the, the like president or whatever of the NWA will sue the WWF and all that. Um, but in the match, the headbangers end up causing the Rock and Roll Express to hit each other a lot. So like um, the Rock and Roll will be running towards one headbanger and then the headbanger will move and so they'll collide into the other guy standing on the apron. And so they just keep doing all that sort of stuff. Um, which then eventually happens enough and the Rock and Roll Express start to like fight with each other and they start pushing on each other and everything and Cornette gets up on the ring apron and starts yelling at him and tells him to make up and make some hug and everything. So they hug and the headbangers attack them and then since they've knocked them out of the way, Cornette's just standing there and the headbangers end up punching Cornette off of the apron. But eventually as Thrasher's bouncing off the ropes, Cornette hits him with the racket and he falls onto Ricky Morton who was knocked out by Thrasher. And so since Thrasher's knocked out on top of Ricky Morton who's knocked out, the referee sees it and so he counts the pin and the headbangers get the win. So the headbangers are the new NWA tag champions and they grab the belts and go running out through the crowd and are celebrating stuff out in the with all the fans. We go to a commercial and come back in. So throughout the night, it keeps being announced by commentary that they're going to announce a new sports legend or something like that that's going to be at WrestleMania. And so they come back from commercial and it's announced. So you heard it there first. Pete Rose is the next person. So it didn't really show anything. Like, you know, they have WWF commercials and videos and stuff when it's supposed to be commercial times, but they didn't play a single thing for Pete Rose. But at some point it was announced that it's going to be him at WrestleMania. Um, then we get a video on Stone Cold Road to WrestleMania, so just showing from his beginning in WWF all the way up until the current times and how he got to where he's at. And that leads into our last match of the night, which is Mark Marrow coming out with Sable, taking on Owen Hart. But as usual, as they get to the ring and stuff before the match starts, Marrow ends up sa sending Sable to the back. And of course, that causes a very loud Sable chant, and it keeps happening throughout the match. Every time Mark Marrow has the upper hand, the crowd just keeps chanting Sable. Until eventually, Sable does end up coming out to ringside, causing Marrow to get distracted, and he starts yelling at her and everything. But Mero eventually hits a low blow on Owen Hart and starts to go for the TKO, but Owen counters out of the TKO and gets the sharpshooter put on Mero to get the win. And soon after the match ends, Luna ends up coming out to the ring and Goldust is trying to hold her back. So she's, you know, coming down the ramp to come to at Sable and Goldust is in front of her just trying to hold her back and everything. And a bunch of officials and referees come running out to hold them back. So they're all in the ring doing a big pull apart type thing. And Sable eventually ends up pushing Marrow down, which then, since she's open and starting to come towards Luna, Goldust ends up grabbing a hold of her and backs her into the corners, holding on. Well, Marrow gets back up and sees that he's got her his hands all over Sable, and so that makes Marrow mad, so he starts attacking Goldust, so it's just a big, huge fight between the two teams. 
And Goldust eventually ends up grabbing a hold of Luna and getting her out of the ring and is just carrying her up the ramp. And Sable gets on the mic and yells, get back here, you bitch. So obviously this is the Attitude Era, so they're cussing a lot more now. And Sable's yelling bitch now on the microphone. And of course that pisses Luna off, so she's of course up on the ramp. And she ends up trying to come back down, ends up knocking Goldust down, but he quickly gets back up and grabs her and picks her up on his shoulder and takes her to the back. And then eventually Sable and Marrow start heading up the ramp after them. And so that's it for Ralt this week. It wasn't that good of a Ralt. Like, I thought it was better than last week, but it wasn't that good. So again, they're still kick ending the show off with the stuff of Sable and Luna, their whole few thing, which, like I said, is in kind of interesting because it's starting to get the women more involved. But it's not, you know, a main event type angle in that WrestleMania. It's a lower card match, so I don't understand why they're going with that at all. It makes no sense to me. But I guess that's it for Raw this week. And again, this is kind of the beginning of their uptick. I believe, like I said, may go have lower ratings, but then they'll slowly start to climb until about April, I think. March or April, I think, is when they take over Nitro. So that's it for the Raw this week. I hope you enjoyed that episode. And like I said, if you watch these along, I don't know what people do with these videos if they watch the Raws along with me when I cover and stuff. But we will now be moving into the fast forward section. But before we do that, I just want to remind you that you can find these episodes on Apple Podcasts and SoundCloud under the Monday Night Rewind. So you can find the shows there and follow them. Or you can see every episode on YouTube under Awesome Nerd Show where you can find the little playlist tab for the Monday Night Rewind and watch all the past any of the past episodes if you want to see all that. And don't forget, we have links in the description below that you can find out. You can buy a shirt for the podcast or you can help support us on Patreon or follow us on social media on Facebook and Twitter at Awesome Nerd Show where you can leave us comments or feedback on the podcast or on the YouTube channel as well. You can leave comments there also. But whatever you can do that I greatly appreciate. So we are now going to get into the fast forward section. Okay we're now in the current times and so for this week there's not a whole lot of news going on at least stuff I could find. There's a lot of course speculation and all sorts of stuff but I don't like to report on rumors and stuff that much unless it actually has something to do. Just stuff that just poured you know oh this person may be coming back or this person may be coming to WWE or something. I just don't want to report on that until it actually happens until it's definitive that they are. But um, so I guess we'll just kind of run through the events that took place this week. Like I said, there's not a whole lot to do. Um, so on, we'll start off with Raw as usual. So on Raw, if you didn't notice or pay attention, there was a gauntlet match that lasted for pretty much the t first two hours of the show. And so we got um, all the competitors, the seven competitors from the Elimination Chamber match, all competing against each other, one person after another. You know, if you win, the next person comes in. And if you win that match, you just keep going until you lose. And then it switches out people. So the show kicked off with Seth Rollins against Roman Reigns, where Seth ended up getting the win there. Then it was Seth versus Cena, and Seth got the win there as well. And then it was Seth versus Elias, but Elias was able to beat Seth at that point. And then it was Balor versus Elias, and Finn Balor ended up beating Elias. And then it was The Miz versus Finn Balor, and The Miz ended up winning there. And then it was Braun Strowman versus The Miz. And Braun ended up being the last person in the match and the winner of the gauntlet match. And so this was a whole big segment for Seth because I believe he lasted about 65 minutes or an hour and five minutes. It was like one of the longest matches or people in the longest matches in Raw history. And then in general, I think it was like the longest match in Raw history because with the whole match, since it was a gauntlet match, it was the whole entire match. And since it took like the two hours... That was considered, you know, one whole match. And so that was, it was kind of impressive. Like, I was sitting here watching it, and I saw, you know, Seth versus Roman, and it just kept going on forever. And I was like, dang, for a gauntlet match, they're moving this along pretty slow. Because usually with gauntlet matches, they move through the matches pretty fast. And then he, Seth ended up winning, and then John Cena came out, and then their match lasted a long time. And like, the whole first hour was the Seth's match, or the matches with Seth in it. I'm like... He is lasting in there forever. And then, of course, at the end when people took records and all sorts of stuff, he was in there for an hour and five minutes. And so it was just pretty fun and entertaining to watch and see that it lasted for that long. It made Raw history. Seth made history. And so it was just a good match overall and a great way to start Raw. But then, of course, nothing much else happened on Raw. There's like nothing much more of note to say on Raw that took place. Like there were just women matches and um, tag matches and stuff, but nothing major went on in any of those matches. Um, we also got on Monday, 
released the announcement of the next Hall of Fame inductee, and it's going to be Jeff Jarrett, Mr. TNA himself. So I don't know. I think who's ever at WWE is on, on the weed because they're introducing Jeff Jarrett, their biggest rival over the last like 15 years and they're inducting him into the hall of fame and he like to me isn't that good of a wrestler i'm just playing this all up by the way i do think he's not that good of a wrestler because obviously i've been watching i've watched all the old rawls up until what we did today and then i watched him you know when we were covering nitro he was in nitro a lot now he's in raw and i just don't think he's that good of a wrestler i mean obviously anybody deserves to be in the hall of fame but with some of the stuff he did against wwe and f at the time and then starting tna to run against them and competing and all sorts of stuff and then there were issues back when the hardys first come to wwe he was like trying to hold stuff back from the from matt getting the broken universe and stuff so it's like he's kind of went against wwe in a lot of things and i just am very surprised that they're inducting him into the hall of fame um i think it'll be interesting to see who inducts him i assume it'll probably be jim Cornette, but you never know could be someone like road dog who of course was roadie for jeff jarrett when he, jeff jarrett first started and was doing the music and stuff so i could see they're one of those two people anybody else i think it'd be kind of too weird and not fit properly but it'll be interesting to see what they do for Jeff Jarrett if they like, you know, try and make a mockery out of it and make fun of him in the end or what exactly. But it's uh, good, I guess, to see that, you know, really where they say, you know, this person will never be allowed back. If they let Jeff Jarrett back, almost anybody can come back unless they've like killed somebody or something. So I just thought that was very interesting and crazy that they are putting Jeff Jarrett in the Hall of Fame. But obviously he's not a main event or headline or whatever. So it'll be interesting to see what they do with him in the future and stuff since he's a Hall of Famer. Then we go to SmackDown, but nothing really happened on SmackDown. Like, I can't really think of anything major that went down. Just I heard a lot of stuff was bad. What I saw was bad because I didn't watch all of SmackDown. So it's like SmackDown was just kind of completely worthless this week. It's not good at all then in 205 live just continued on with the cruiserweight championship and the whole first round is done and there's now a bracket that you can go online and i saw they said it's printable so you can print it out to keep track of everything but they've continued on with the good matches so that's good for 205 live to get them out of what they were doing into the better match quality and everything and then the, i guess the last piece of information i haven't checked any news today on the day i'm recording this if anything newer has come out of like news of anything um i usually try and check before i record the note say or anything of note that happens on this day but um the last thing is also last night was nxt and johnny gargano ended up losing his return match against andrade c and almas so gargano lost so that means he is no longer allowed in nxt or have a career in nxt whatever the exact wording was so that means he's no longer in NXT. I assume my personal thing is like I assume he'll still make appearances. You know, kind of be like a rogue agent on NXT and just kind of show up and attack Almas whenever he wants to until the next takeover at WrestleMania. Or he could just be moved up to the main event or to the main event roster on Raw or SmackDown or something. He'd probably go on 205 Live, but they're doing the bracket now, so there's no real room for him unless someone gets injured and they move him into that spot. But then I think if you did that, he'd have to win the tur um, tournament, which I'm perfectly fine with. I don't care about that. But I just feel since they're doing the tournament, it should be you know someone that's actually been in more matches and everything. So it'll be interesting to see exactly what they do with Gargano going on from here to see if they immediately move him up or if he, like I said, kind of like the rogue agent or whatever in NXT and just kind of a man with no home. But that's all the news I have. I don't have anything else to add. I don't know of any other company news like New Japan or Ring of Honor or anything like that. I don't know any of other news things that went on. I don't know. But that's going to be it for the Monday Night Rewind podcast this week. Don't forget you can follow the show in podcast form on the Apple Podcast app or through SoundCloud. Or you can check all the episodes out on YouTube on their Awesome Nerd Show where you can subscribe there to check out all our videos that we upload. And don't forget to check out those links down in the description where you can find the stuff to help support the channel or to follow us on social media. But I thank you for listening this week and I hope you enjoyed and we'll see you next week. Bye.